Hey everybody, welcome to my studio. In today's lesson, we are going to do a value study of this yellow lab. I'm also going to show you how I use this, a value scale. It's one that I created myself. Let's get started. Okay, here we have the finished picture that we'll be painting in this lesson. It's a value study of a yellow lab. Why do value studies? Well, value is really more important to your painting than color. And a lot of people don't realize that. The value is the relative lightness and darkness of the tones in the picture. And when you capture value, you really capture the essence of the picture, of the shape, of the subject that you're painting. And again, value is more important than color. So in a value study, we paint with just one color. And using one color, here I've used indigo, you capture the full range of values from the darkest dark areas of the picture to the lightest light areas. Let's take a look at the reference image. This is the picture that I am painting from. There's a link in the description below where you can download the same copyright free image from uh, unsplash.com. And you can see here the very light areas of the picture, at the top of the head of the dog and on its back, and then the very darkest areas. Those would be the areas in the eye and the mouth and the nose. So the first step in doing a value study is to choose the color that you're gonna use. I've chosen indigo, it's a Daniel Smith color. Look for the link in the description below. And one other thing you can do uh, to prepare for your value study is to do a value scale. You can see here, I've done a value scale, a 10 step value scale that goes from the very darkest color using indigo, which is in step one, up to the lightest color, which is actually no color at all. It's just the white of the paper at step 10. And it can be very helpful to do a scale like this before you get started with your value study. So you can see the darkest color that you can get all the way through the 10 steps of that particular color. And again, this is using indigo. Okay, let's get started with the actual painting. I have on my palette here, I have my indigo. My in, indigo is, is um, it's the only color I'm gonna use. Okay, so you gotta choose a color. I don't care what color. And um, again, it doesn't have to be the quote unquote correct color for a dog, right? You might think, oh, it should be brown, it should be whatever. It doesn't matter, because we're not worried about color, we're worried about value. Hopefully I've made myself clear. Now, one thing I want to do here is uh, I'm going to look at my reference picture, uh, which is off screen for me, but I'm, I see in my painting that the lightest areas of the dog essentially are kind of along its, this back side of the dog that, that will, will We'll pretend like the light's coming from this direction, okay? Uh, it seems to be, maybe. Uh, it's not a real strong light source, but we'll just assume the light's coming from this, so the lightest part of the dog's will be on the back side, and then the darkest part of the dog just naturally is over here where these other dark parts are. And so because of that, I want to have contrast with the background. So where there's light, then I want the background to be dark. So that creates a nice, strong negative shape of dark along here. And likewise, where the dog is darkest here on the front, I don't want a very strong background. So I'm not going to really follow the reference image as far as um, where the background goes. The background has got a beach and beach scene or whatever. We're going to ignore that. And instead, I'm going to just um, put a darkish background shape-ish along this side and maybe not anything on this side or if anything, a real, real light application. Okay. So I'm going to paint, uh, get a nice pool of my indigo. And um, I'm just going to, again, I see that I really need to create, I'm gonna just, and this is, I'm going wet on, on dry here right now, um, which, you know, maybe I could have wetted my paper first, but that's okay. I'm gonna get a nice sharp edge by doing it this way. And, um, I'm, I am gonna, I want those edges there to be a little bit uh, smoother or, or softer. I like to soften my edges whenever possible. Okay, so I'm gonna do that there. And again, this is pretty, pretty dark along the, the dog's back there. But now, um, 
on this other side I want to gradually move towards um, a little bit of a lighter background again because I'm I want a contrast a strong contrast between the shape of the dog and so I'm just basically getting the pigment out of my brush here and um, and just doing a little bit of a very light so again tones let's, let's uh, sorry values let's think about values for a second um, I'm not I'm not doing I'm not paying the dog yet so I'm not really evaluating the values of the dog but I'm just evaluating the values of this background uh, I've got probably like a, a five or, or six over here or maybe a four um, and then I've got a really light value over here right almost like a, a one uh, sorry a nine I, I, I always mix my numbers up I tend to think of darker as a higher number but it's the opposite okay so that, I like that um, that gives me an outline negative painting of my dog uh, and I'm, I'm putting a darker values on the, the side of the dog that's lighter and vice versa. You get the idea. Okay. I'm going to go over and even make, I'm taking and just dropping in even some more of my pigment there. Why not? Just because I can. I'm gonna just let that be now. Don't fuss with it anymore. If you fuss with it, then you get problems. Okay. Now I was using up to that point. I was using a 12 round. And by the way, I'm painting on a nine by six piece of paper. So this is a fairly small format. Again, I tend to do that for these lessons because uh, larger is just takes longer. Okay. At this point, I've finished the background of the painting, and now I'm gonna start painting the dog. What I'm gonna do is choose a very light value, probably a nine or an eight on the scale, and pretty much do a wash over almost all of the dog, except for the highlights, those areas that are tens. That'll be at the very top of the dog's head, along his back, and maybe a little bit on his chest where there's some highlights. So watch now as I do this next part. But now I want to mix up a, a next tonal value, which would be pretty light, like a nine or an eight, and just paint those areas that I say I look on here and see so maybe around the eye up here um, that's that's a little bit darker and maybe along the side of its it nose okay up into here and then um, and, and maybe a little bit under its eye actually that's a darker color in here so but I'd like to get a soft blending so maybe I'll just drop some darker in there okay clean off my brush go back to my like other value which is more of a of an eight or nine and I see up against the nose here and in here um, that color again the only areas I don't want to paint in this first wash really are the highlights so keep your eye out for where is what I'm gonna call my my whitest white, the white of the paper, really it's only up here at the top of the of the head, okay, a little bit, and um, but not the ear, the ear is actually quite, um, and you, you can come back later and make areas darker, but you can't make them lighter, right? So let's, um, we can go ahead and every area that's not completely white, I've said this a couple times already, let's just go ahead and put in a nice um, wash, and again, I wish I had a slightly larger brush. I guess I do have a larger brush. I can go back to that because I feel like I, I don't want to work in tiny little strokes, right, as much as possible. I want to work. Um, so, yeah, maybe we can just even come in here and get the, the mouth and uh, this area under the mouth. Now, I want to maintain some of those folds have um, some real highlights in them, so I don't want to get all of that. So leaving some white there some white in here but otherwise um, and we definitely want white on the back of the dog okay on its back and you know this except for some highlights on the the belt buckle whatever it's called the <laughs> buckle there uh, that's pretty dark and then again I need to I didn't even good all okay so there you go something like that okay so again, 
look, don't look at doll. Don't when you look at this, don't see dog. See, um, see shapes. Okay. Uh, if you haven't taken any drawing classes, which just kind of teach you like drawing on the left side of the brain, right side of the brain. Sorry, drawing. On, if you've never read that, read that. I mean, that is super helpful to help you to start to train your brain to think and look at shapes and not see, for example, in this case, dog. We're not painting dog, we're painting shapes. Okay, okay. I really could have done more on the eye there because the eye also is definitely, um, you know, is definitely a very dark area. So uh, this area is around it, it's still wet. Um, so I don't know if I want to totally, I might want to leave some kind of glint in the eye there just because that's always good to do on any living creature. Um, you want to kind of create that glint. Um, probably shouldn't have done that because that really spread. I'm going to wait. These areas that are wet, I don't, um, I'm going to let that kind of dry at this point. So what have I done? I've retained the white here, here, and here. Uh, probably could have painted uh, my value, my one, two value, a little bit more even. I think I'll keep that tongue a little light because lighter than it shows just because I, and the tooth there is light. Um, okay, so those are the areas I'm retaining. So that, that does okay. All right. I think I'm going to go in here and just kind of keep working in some areas. So I'm going to a next darker tone. So this is maybe my... Um, six or something and I see some of these areas say, along the edge of the the, um, the ear um, there's a pretty dark shadow coming out from under the ear here so I'm just gonna put that in there's a, a dark um, shadow or fold in the ear up in here as well okay now notice if, if I'm, I'm painting right now in areas that are still wet, and so I'm doing wet on wet, and so the paint starts to spread, which is okay, because these, are, these shadows are kind of softy edges, right? So the fact that they're, they're spreading out is okay. So this is where um, really thinking through what you're doing, and it only comes from experience, is helpful, is if you want hard lines, then you need to wait for it to dry. But if you're okay with uh, softer edges like where there's shadows and stuff then just keep painting even though we're in a kind of a yeah even though we're wet on wet and it's gonna spread so you get the idea okay then again you have to be careful because like here I did put some more paint down and then it bloomed Woo -hoo, it bloomed on me oh well now this this is pretty dark over here I just feel like I want to put some of that in there. Okay. I think I am going to dry this a bit because I'm I'm right now I'm having trouble controlling what I want to do because I'm wet on wet and I don't have a lot of areas I have areas now that I want to make dark but I'm unable to do that um, because I'm getting these whoosh, blooms okay so if you have a hair dryer with you um, which I always recommend that you have some people don't like to use them but if you don't use them then you're gonna have to let things you have to wait to let it dry since we have limited time I'm gonna dry it with hair dryer now if I continue I'm gonna be painting um, wet on dry um, and uh, now I won't get that uh, spreading of the color okay so what do I want to do next? It's always good to just stop and evaluate. Okay, what do you have so far? What do you like? I've got this bloom here, but I can fix that later because there is kind of an interesting pattern in the dog's muzzle there. And I might be able to use this bloom to my advantage, okay, because uh, I can kind of turn it into the speckles on its nose, on its muzzle. That, that could work good. Um, I think at this point, because I've got dry paper, I think I want to go in, because with dry paper I can now get hard edges, and I think I'm going to go in and actually put in some of the darkest areas. Now, maybe you think that's I'm breaking the rules, because now I'm not going dark lightest to darkest. I'm going to jump to my dark areas. It's okay. You don't always have, so I'm getting, you don't always have to do it a specific way. You know, rules are meant to be broken, but 
Um, so look at my painting and go, where's the darkest dark, dark areas? Well, obviously it's nostrils, which you should have drawn in to a certain extent. They kind of come around and make a nice little loop-de-loop. -loop. Um, and uh, the other nostril, okay. And maybe a bit of a line coming down here. Definitely the inside of the mouth, okay, uh, is, is, is definitely. Now again, try not to just see mouth or tongue, see shapes, negative shapes around. Don't think, because uh, if you start seeing specific things like tooth, mouth, tongue, you're going to think, oh, I know how that's shaped, and you're going to start to draw it without really just looking at the shapes that you see. Again, I refer you to drawing on the right side of the brain, if you've never read that. Okay, um, so, um, yeah. and you'll notice as soon as you start putting in these really dark areas, okay, um, you're, you're going, oh, you're going to be like, wow, look, the dog's nose just pops right out. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and, um, and that's kind of that's kind of cool, okay? Because those dark areas really represent um, the sh the, sh the shadows, and the shadows really define the shape uh, of any given thing, okay? Something like that. I'm gonna come up and say now, where's there's a bit a real good dark spot over this eye, uh, the left eye, but it's not entirely dark, okay? There's there's some light in there, and I'm gonna leave that for now. I'm really just painting value one. Value one on our scale is the darkest, darkest dark. Okay, again, the numbers are maybe kind of counterintuitive. I can't talk when I'm painting. Okay, um, I'm really just looking for the darkest dark. Now, eyes can be, oh, eyes are so important, right? The eyes are the window to the soul we know that and so I'm really looking at that and going well there's that and then there's right around the iris there's a nice dark dark circle I'm gonna put that in and then of course there's another the iris is another area and I kind of had a little bit of a dot there that I wanted to keep so uh, which is the glint which is kind of towards the back of the eye at least in the way I'm interpreting it so we'll just leave it like that Okay, what are some other darkest dark areas? Okay, might take a little bit of, of license here. Now I'm painting dr wet on dry, so now I've got much more control, right? I've just got a lot more control because I'm not, I don't have wet paper. And I'm going to use that to my advantage, right? I like that. All right, good little doggy. This is probably one of the most popular breeds in America, the Yellow Lab. And a little bit now um, of the darkest dark, that what I would call my value one, is along the edge of this ear, right? And so I'm just going to do that. You're looking at values. You're not looking at colors. You're not looking at the shape necessarily. But that'll do it. And what other areas? Probably inside. Again, I, I think I think if I was really being careful on how I'm looking at this, I think that might be the air, all the areas that are the blackest black, the 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 value one, um, have pretty much been done. Okay, I would say okay that that's probably the case, uh, which is above the tongue, inside the mouth. And um, now that doesn't mean there's not some value too, which is just a little bit darker, right? Um, and that can come back and go around these areas then. But for, for now, what I see, the areas that if I had to say what are areas are in that uh, value one, which is my darkest dark, what areas are they? Okay, and I think I've painted them. Okay, and, um, and again, that's what this is all about. You can look through there and just say, well, you know, those areas of my reference are, are that area. So um, now there might be a little bit in the muzzle here, but actually I think I'm going to keep that for value two and not, not go any more with this. Okay. So now I might mix up my, um, 
my my next darkest value, which would be my one, uh, sorry, my two, and say, okay, well, our, you know, there's some areas here in the muzzle that come below um, this area that I was just doing, the nose, and come in here. Now I don't, I see that there's actually there's a line of lighter value there, so I don't want to go right up to the mouth, um, and um, you know, and then maybe there's even some little dots, right, representing the dogs. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just put those in right now. One thing to do is you're working on something like this is really you want to um, squint a fair bit, and um, that helps you um, just see values and not see. Um, okay, so some of these other. Now because I was working, I didn't have a lot of wash or water in those last wash that when I was doing value one, these, these areas aren't super wet, they're drying pretty quickly. So I'm able now to come in here and, and just paint right up to them without too much problem. I do want to accentuate some of these folds in the skin at this point, here and here. Okay but I don't like the hard edges there because those are shadows so I'm gonna get some water on my brush and come in and just soften that edge okay it's kind of a hard edge on the right because it's right up against the um, the really light of the fold but it fades off towards the left does that make sense so I'm going to do it like that. So I put down some water and then I'm just touching in and doing something like that. Okay, that's fine. Um, I like to look around the nose here. I need a better shape going on to um, this left of the eye. So I'm going to come in and create some of these shapes and some of this shadow underneath the eye. It comes down in a shape, kind of a triangular shape under the eye, the left side of the muzzle. Um, is more of in a shadow. It's not really that dark of a value, so I probably need to lighten that a bit. Maybe even, um, yeah, kind of soften these edges a little bit. And of course, I just touched some of those dots that I had put down. That's okay. They kind of spread, but uh, I kind of like that look. I like mistakes, um, honestly, when they happen because I think they sometimes they they create character in the painting and um, okay so now I'm coming back to this shadows under the ear and um, kind of accentuating that a bit more this is wet on dry size 8 brush All right. Um, this, if I squint and look that ear even the, you know, the ear is more of a brownie color than the rest of the dog right and so but this is where you can ignore, again, ignore color and just see value. If you squint and look at it, it's quite a bit darker than the rest of the dog. So I want to accentuate that. So I'm going to get a darker value. I don't know what number this is. I've kind of lost track. but um, And I'm going to see that down the center, there's a bit of a mass. And over on the left, on the right, excuse me, uh, there's a bit of a mass of dark color. And then along this edge, there's also accentuating the kind of edge of the ear. And I'm going to do something like that. And I want to soften some of this because it's too, it's too abrupt. Should be more uh, soft edge. And um, there we go. Something like that. I like that better. Okay. I'm going to go down just because I want to get away from that area. Again, um, the collar. Okay. The collar. If you squint and look at that, oh boy, that collar is dark, right? Just squint and look at it and go, yeah. Don't think color. Don't think collar. Just think, um, think shape. Okay, and what value is it? And I'd say, yeah, that's a pretty dark area. I'm gonna come up here, right up to where, um, and as it gets to the back of the dog, it gets a little lighter. So I'm not gonna go all the way dark to the edge. And then I'm gonna come in here and and then skip where the buckle is, because that's pretty light. And I want to paint negative painting around that buckle. I want to keep that shape, okay, 
buckle, whatever. It's that part of it that's. Um, this this is uh, this is really challenging to talk <laughs> and do this at the same time. So I hope I'm making sense. Sometimes I listen to the videos later and go, what in the world was I saying? Um, all right, now again, this is still pretty dark, so I'm going to come in here and just paint this other part, the left side of the of the collar, and it's pretty a continuous tone on this side, except for along the top. Um, there's there's a, a light edge, and then there's dark. And it, this is hard because I chose this is a fair bit of detail in here, and this is a small format. Maybe you're painting on a bigger piece of paper, and if so, then yours you'll have a bit more room to to do that. I'm gonna paint along the um, try to capture the the shape of that part. Also, the metal loop that the thing goes through is uh, dark on the bottom and left and much quite dark actually it's almost a one and then it's a um, it goes to a, a complete ten on the top so there's a real strong change from the dark dark of the bottom of this metal loop to the top and you gotta capture that right and it's all value that's all we're doing is value okay now uh, some hmm. I see along the edge of this, it's darker along the top, it's still wet, so as I put it on there, it spreads. There's, um, yeah, I'm going to leave out that. I think along the uh, edge of this, I'm going to do something like that. I think it'll give a sense for this edge of the, uh, of the collar. Okay, uh, keep going with the collar over to the left here, like that. All right, I think that's pretty good. Now, there's, um, if I go back, I just am scanning the picture and saying, okay, what have I not done yet? And I look up here, right around the mouth, above the mouth, um, I left it pretty light in there. Uh, that's not exactly accurate, is it? It's actually, it goes from the dark, dark of the mouth, and it gets into a mid-tone here in the center, or sorry, in this area. So I'm going to go back with a medium tone, a medium value, and just kind of paint over in that white area I left, because it doesn't look right, and do that, okay? And again, there is that really dark uh, little wrinkle. He's got like a dimple. He's got a little dimple. He's cute. Okay, I like that. And uh, there we go. Okay, I like that. And then again, it was already wet. And when I put the darker, it kind of spread into it, which looked cool. And we just love it. Okay. And there's, I put that a little too dark. The value's too dark. You're always looking at values, okay? All right, above the eye over here, um, on this left eye, uh, was not dark enough. I had initially put in a little bit of dark, the initial wash, remember when I was using nine or something? And I put some in there, but that's not that's not dark enough. So in between the, the one value, which is the darkest value of the eye, I want to kind of get a, and I, again, I have to be careful because I want to keep the bridge of the nose white, white right because that's one of the highlight areas and that's going to represent the shape of the muzzle so don't paint over that okay and um, there you go I like that oh the back ear there's actually um, you know I didn't really keep the shape very well when I did this but there's a bit of a something like that up there like that that and again these areas have already dried so now I'm coming back with even a more this is again glazing when you have multiple layers of transparent paint applied uh, one on top of the other allowing for drying in between that's going to give you uh, lots of layers and, and watercolor is very mm, glazing is just a great technique for watercolor because of the transparency of the paint it lets the other values now we're only using one color here so we're not getting the full effect of glazing because when you glaze with multiple colors you see the colors shining through the other colors which is super cool right um, but so we aren't getting that effect but that's okay all right I'm coming back in here this is pretty dark right underneath uh, there's like a fold of skin and then there's the rest of this the chin, I don't know, not, it's not the right word for a dog, I don't think dogs have chins, but um, 
there's just a fair bit of folding of the skin and various things going on there so okay all right I like that that's good enough just sometimes just walk away from something which you're like well that's good enough for now just walk away and let that part dry and then you come back to it later and um, yeah okay and seeing underneath this collar um, and I'm gonna almost be fixing a problem that I had earlier um, where I had a bloom right here and just kind of paint a line right through that and that'll help to I didn't really put the dog's tag in the picture <laughs> so maybe you added it um, whatever but so I'm just ignoring that and just kind of painting this dark area down here should be more like it's a nice way of negative painting around the the um, the collar all of that and creating some negative shape to help us see that collar okay um, um okay I stand back I squint I look where am I missing some real dark values in my opinion the nut the muzzle the nose is definitely not dark enough yet okay so and this is pretty dry up in here in the nose and so if I look at that the, do the, the dog's nose is darker at the bottom of these shapes and that makes sense because um, light comes from above and so I'm gonna kinda make the areas of the dog's nose uh, here darker on the bottom of these shapes Okay, and then, um, and I had already put a little bit of a lighter tone at the top, so I'm just going to leave that. Um, okay, something like that. Uh, I see there's more going on here that I didn't paint. I kind of miss. There's kind of like a another bit of his nose that does something like that we're getting into the fine details but these are important details right things like you know the primary facial features of a person like the nose the eyes the mouth <laughs> just like that with a dog the eyes the, the nose and the mouth are the most important thing you gotta kinda get those right or else it doesn't look like a dog and that's that's where we're at right now is trying to get those areas and I don't know if I'm doing a very good job stand back and look because that really if you get too looking in there too too close you're not seeing the hole and then you get off okay so I see if I do that I can go yeah I kind of need a bit more around there a bit more in there ah. Let's see it was wet and I put it down and now I got a little bit spread but here's the beauty if you catch it quick enough you can lift something like that okay that's uh, I think that's okay you may have to let that dry and come back to it in a little bit let's go over to the other eye the other eye goes from the dark dark that I put around the iris right but that center of the eye the colored part of his eye that's brown in the picture is not really as light a value as what I left. It's a very dark value. So there's too much of a contrast between the outer. And that's what makes it look funny. He looks buggy eyed, right? So I need to, um, I'm going to keep some of the highlights, just a couple glint spots that I want to keep. But other than that, I'm going to paint around those and darken with a, a darker value around the pupil. And that's going to make that eye not look so buggy eyed you know what I mean okay and there's too much that's a little too light there okay so except for except for a couple little glints that's a pretty dark that whole area is pretty dark it should be pretty dark so I'm gonna that letting that flow down a little bit underneath the eye it looks cool um, 
this is dried over here again so I'm gonna even do a bit more here and here more of this shadow, a bit more accentuated, darker. Okay, again, this is a value study, right? So we're thinking value. Now, if I go over to the tongue, the tongue, I never did paint it before. I decided to leave it pretty light, but it, um, red is actually, a, comes across as a pretty dark value. So if you squint and look, that, the tongue is actually, it's certainly not on, it's, it's kind of in the middle of the, of the tones. Um, but I still want to try and capture the shapes of it. So um, I'm seeing that um, here on the left side of the tongue is, is a little darker, comes up to that crease, and maybe a, a, along the top where it's closer inside the, inside the mouth, so no light's getting to it, right? Something like that. Okay, just leave that for now. Because if I go back to it now and do anything, it's going to mess it up. Okay. Um, I see in here I need it uh, I need a a line along this little fold of skin maybe a bit more darken that and then soften out the edges okay something like that there's actually a pretty dark bit right above the buckle here in the fur still that I didn't catch and again you're negative painting around there so important that you begin to see value okay again that's the whole point of this lesson this exercise I mean we might end up actually having kind of a cool little picture of a dog by the time we're done with this but that was a little bit less of my my intent um, it more of my intent was actually to say let's think about value and um, and see how when we paint the values correctly it doesn't matter what color we use paint the color the values correctly that's when the shapes emerge that's when the actual subject emerges from the paper okay yeah and if I look at that I go yeah that's so cool it looks pretty good there's a bit more of a dark dark around to the left of this tongue or, sorry tooth and this is another thing I, I'm not fully sure I do it very well but it you'll hear people talk about connecting shapes so I have the dark to the right of the tooth that goes into the mouth area and that's all dark 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 then that comes up past the tooth and into the mouth so those shapes are actually connected you might be wondering what difference does it make well I don't know exactly uh, maybe somebody else who knows better why but that can make a comment in here but that connecting of shapes sometimes can really do something cool okay I'm gonna I'm gonna paint a bit more of the dark in here this is all dry and um, I don't want to mess up any of my previous areas but I'm even going darker in the center of that mouth because again that's one of the darkest areas and in here and, oh, I just that was wet so I kind of maybe mess that up maybe not I don't know darkest of the nozzle, the um, nose, nostril, whatever. Yeah, I like that. Okay, what are we doing on time? All right, we're about um, 50 minutes into this. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking it's looking pretty cool, looking pretty good. What areas still need to be done? We, we achieved... Um, I think some areas, again, let's talk about contrast. And again, this is because values is where we really can see this. Your eye is drawn to the areas of highest contrast. So sometimes you want to not, to, to adjust your composition a little bit, not do exactly what you see, but knowing that we really want the, the people to be, their eye to be drawn to the eye, primarily, really is one of the most important parts. Um, we want to make sure we have high contrast there. So that's why I left light above the eye on its eyebrow 
and dark in the in the eye. And I don't even know if I have a high enough contrast there. So high contrast where we go from the dark dark is right up against the light light, right? And that if we do that well, that will draw the eye like a magnet right into that part of the picture. And that's what we want. We can let people ignore other parts of the picture and get away with it and not really care about that because um, it's not the important part. Like the background, you know, we just did that kind of quick. It was just kind of an amorphous shape. Um, and um, But and it doesn't really matter there because we don't want our eye. We don't want to put a lot of detail in the background. If we do that, we actually end up causing people to get distracted all right, there's so much going on in the picture. The background's got just as much detail as the foreground, and your eye does not know where to look. Okay, and that's a problem. I felt like that eye, the upper eye, wasn't done quite right, so I wanted to add a bit more darkness into the eye and um, a bit more of a gradual change into this eye socket area here, maybe. I don't know, something like that. Um, Fun little dog. I see that muzzle area in the front of the nose, and it's okay. It's all right. Those little dots have now dried, so now I can actually go over this area and not. Mm, be worried about um, blurring or removing or decimating <laughs> those little dots, right? So I can come back in and do something like that. Um, and that's the beauty of watercolor. If you give it enough time, it dries a little bit, and then you can go back and do something like that. Okay. All right. I think that I might call this good enough. Um, one thing, if I look here, one thing I could do, this is pretty light along here, right? Remember I said I wanted to do contrast between the background? Um, so light area of the dog to dark background. Dark area of the dog to light background. But down in here in front of its chest, um, it's actually pretty light in here. And I'm not getting a nice strong sense of the shape of the dog there. So I might I don't want to do the whole background again, but I might come in here and just do some putting down a, a wa wash of water, somewhat clear water. Mine's a little dirty, but whatever. And then and just get that wet in there, and um, and then come in and grab in some of my. And again, I I didn't paint into the dog at all because I just wanted to create a little bit more. Just kind of edit my background a little bit. Okay. And um, because again, you're trying to um, paint I don't know. was that necessary? I don't know. I think it's it's fine. Um, sometimes when you're done with I find that when I'm done with the background, I shouldn't really go back and do any more with it, but uh, it's okay. Okay, we have a, a, a value study. We've used only one color, and we've painted a picture of a yellow lab. We talked about value, how value goes uh, is simply the relative dark and lightness of the areas of the picture. We always want to kind of paint a picture that has a full tonal range that goes from darkest dark areas to lightest light areas. That is one of the biggest mistakes or I guess challenges that I see that beginning watercolor painters have is they're afraid honestly to go real dark or they're afraid to just put down some really bold dark areas of the painting I don't know because they're afraid they'll mess it up but so their color their paintings tend to have the same value throughout the whole painting if you just stood back and looked at some of your paintings and squinted and go is it all the same value? Is it all essentially the same relative lightness and darkness? If it is, that's a that's a problem. Nothing will pop out at you. 
and therefore you don't really have have any, have anything to look at and so um, you want to get to the point where you can see value okay now I'm I could probably sit here and muss around with this forever I see areas in this collar and stuff that are not dark enough right um, but is the collar really the focus of the dog no <laughs> okay um, so I probably should just not worry about the collar and just let it be because I want that contrast area to be the eyes the nose the mouth right and so I'm gonna stop I guess I should sign it I always tell you to sign it so I'm just gonna uh, you know sometimes I just put my three initials and not put my entire name because I don't know my name's kinda long and good enough okay okay I hope you've enjoyed this video if so please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit that notification bell so that you're notified the next time I put out a video down in the description area below this video you're gonna find links to all the materials and products that I used in this painting and that I have in my studio again thanks for watching see you next time